I'm not a pioneer. Um, the pioneers around here were in the 60s and the early 70s. So I was second generation. So I wasn't a pioneer, but I was a settler. So, you know, a lot of the, the uh, uh, stuff had been staked out in the first wave of, of uh, immigration. <laughs> and then I was in the second wave of immigration. So I was, I was a settler, but not a pioneer. First time I rock climbed and started climbing was uh, 1976. I started ice climbing as an extension of my, my rock climbing and initially got into rock climbing because it was uh, the most accessible form of climbing to me. But uh, being from Western Canada, where today it was minus 31 degrees, 33 degrees Celsius outside my front door. So we get eight months of winter and only four months of summer. So ice climbing, if you want to be a climber, ice climbing was a great way to make it a year-round pursuit. Plus, my big ambitions in climbing were to become an alpinist. And uh, yeah, ice climbing is, is, is part of that uh, education and part of that process. Well, what I enjoy about ice climbing is, uh, you know, it, it, it's really multifaceted. I actually like being in the cold. Ice climbing is a great way to spend a winter's day. I like getting up early. I'm a morning person. I like getting up before the rest of the world's up. I like getting my gear together. I like making a plan. I like uh, going out and meeting my climbing partners. And uh, I like traveling through the mountains often uh, before the sun's up and uh, appreciating the mountains in the dark. And you know, sometimes uh, with ice climbing, a lot of time with ice climbing, starting my day by headlamp. And I like seeing the frosts, the billowing clouds of my own exhaled breath forming clouds in front of my face. And when it's exceptionally cold, I actually kind of uh, get enchanted with uh, ice forming on my eyebrows. and a halo of ice forming around my chest on a long approach and uh, getting to crack that up and break it away like armor when I get to the climb. I'm also like, you know, in, in a lot of places in Alberta, um, like uh, the Ghost River, which is a very important ice climbing venue for us, you know, I end up following trails that uh, feral horses have made. And I like following the horse shit because the horses take the easiest way through the forest too. And there is no you know, trails cut through these forests. They're, they're kind of virgin forests. So, you know, in Canada, we say that the Inuit have 200 words to describe snow. Ice climbers probably develop, you know, 50 to 100 words to describe different formations of ice in the vertical. Um, I really love to see the change in the medium that I'm working with because I'm a tool user. I've got a tool on every limb. I'm, I'm like, almost the ultimate tool user for humanity. So that's pretty cool. And learning how to take that metal and put it into those 50 to 100 different forms of ice and stress it a certain amount without breaking it. The enchantment of the way that ice forms, like it's, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, uh, been to Spain and, and seen uh, you know, some of uh, Gaudi's architecture. And uh, ice climbs are kind of like, maybe Gaudi got his, some of his inspiration, it all came out of nature, but perhaps he got some of it from frozen ice because I can see it in his architecture. It's formation and uh, the world it can get you into. And some of the ice climbs that we do around here, you actually get right inside the ice. Like you go up inside ice tunnels and stuff, you know, physically within, this two or three meter expanse of, of chandeliers and columns and blues and greens. I guess one of the other things I like about ice is its complexity and its mental challenge to make safe. So it's quite a great uh, mental engagement of a chess game of where is the solid ice in this structure for one to take the pick of my ice axe or my crampon point and for two, where do I find enough structure and strength in here to get ice screws and keep this a relatively safe pursuit for me? And then size, you know, like a lot of stuff, uh, size matters. So big, complicated ice climbs, you know, that you do, I don't know, maybe 10 rope lengths to get up some of the really big stuff or 15, you know, that's, that's quite a lot to put into a day. One of the other things I really like about ice climbing and climbing in general is the bond that I form with the people I'm out ice climbing with. 
that the, the, the sides of uh, their being that you get to see um, often uh, across the spectrum, but maybe more when they're stressed. You know, at times you snap like a dry twig, you just lose it, you pitch a hissy. Because of the external stresses, the stresses of a mountain and the stresses of the, of the you know, a storm and stresses of avalanches and rock fall and lightning and thunder and all that kind of stuff. You know, I pitched a hissy on uh, the fourth day of an ascent on the east face of Mount Fay in 1984 and uh, going across storm and avalanches, all that stuff. And I get halfway across this traverse towards my friend Dave Cheeseman and I just snap and I turn around and start screaming and swearing at the storm, you know, obscenities like, you know, treating it like an adversary and challenging it, you know, like, fuck you, you fucking storm, you fucking can't kill us, you fucking can't kill us, you cocksucker, you blah, 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 blah. And I'm pitching this hissy, and my buddy Carl Tobin comes up to me, looks at me, he goes, hey man, it don't gotta be fun to be fun, and he just keeps going. <laughs> it was just perfect, <laughs> you know, like, wow. Asking an alpinist and a mountain guide, what is the one most fearful thing in your I've, I've, I've got over 5,000 days as a field guide. Yeah, you're gonna have to narrow it down, son. <laughs> no shortage of fear in this game, boy. <laughs> so, but I can uh, say that uh, getting hit by the uh, snow mushroom on Howe's Peak in 1999 uh, was one of the most fearful, especially um, given that we were following largely a water ice system on the east side of Howe's Peak. And I was 40 years old. I turned 40 years old the next day. So in my 20s and 30s, I didn't have as a profound appreciation of mortality and my own mortality as I do now. Another event that doesn't have to do with ice climbing, although we were going to go ice climbing, similar was being treed by a grizzly for three and a half hours. So kind of similar levels of terror, abject terror. Yeah. Some of the ice climbs that stick with me, some of the experiences. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was wild in the early 1993. So along this cliff, another formation um, where there was a curtain of ice, you know, basically the size of me and Jojo touching shoulders, hanging over a roof and ice in the corner, go up a couple meters out there is this curtain of ice, this dagger. And, uh, you know, I go up and uh, get good ice screws in the, in the less steep ice in the corner. Then I got to span out across the roof to get to this icicle. That's what we want to do. We want to get on this icicle, right? The only way I can get touching the icicle is to tie off a chalk stone in the back, wrap a prussic cord around my hand and do a rappel with my hand, tension out on my hand so I can finally reach and touch the icicle. Tap, 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 tap into the icicle. Don't break, don't break. And then I let go and I'm hanging by one ice tool in space. And Jojo immediately starts freaking out. What are you doing? Oh my God, turn around, wrap your legs around it. But I'm kind of comfortable hanging in space with the muscles in your forearm you know, if you kind of relax your grip, they, they spiral you. You don't hang perfectly straight like Stallone and Cliffhanger. I'm rotating around, I'm quite comfortable. But then it's like, okay, yeah, I gotta do something. So tap, 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 both tools in, pull up, and I have brand new Gravel uh, crampons fresh out of the box that morning, out of the cardboard box. I can't kick this icicle, it's gonna break. So I scratch them down until they grab on something and I can, get up and get an ice tool above the roof where it's a little solid and there's this skull-sized blob of ice on the edge of the icicle and I throw my knee over it, I get a knee hook and everything gets relaxed, I'm hanging by my knee and Pat's getting pictures and Jojo's chilled. I get an ice screw above the roof so all the risk goes way, way down and yeah, I stand up and, and lead on from that. Another real cherished memory, Guy Lasalle, um, an extension to a, a climb called Riptide which was the first ice climb in the Canadian Rockies, given the grade of seven and a, a beautiful climb. And I was up there with my friend Guy and it was blizzarding and the avalanche hazard was escalating. It was just a really trying day. Like, 
cold, all that kind of stuff. And there's this dagger out in space over there, rock traverse to get to. And the dagger hangs out, you know, away from the wall. And Guy wants to do this. And I'm like, Guy, man, I think we should go down. You know, it's it's getting more dangerous on the snow slope is the big danger here. We're getting back down that snow slope at the base of the climb. And Guy's like, oh, Barry, it would be nice to have a better day. But this is the day we have. So suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Pretty darn cool.